this is a honeybee and honeybees are under threat at the moment and uh, also uh, bumblebees are under threat so this is a bumblebee and uh, habitat lo loss seems to be the main um, reason for their disappearance uh, this is another type of bumblebee it's a very pretty one it's on a raspberry uh, flower and these are the types of bees that we generally see and know as bees but there's other types too in fact most bees uh, are unlike these in that they don't sting and uh, they live solitary lives so honeybee has uh, huge colonies bumblebees uh, 30 40 50 in a colony and these next bees um, are solitary bees so the female just lays her eggs provides uh, food for some pollen and um, uh, some sort of mix of pollen for the baby bees to eat and um, uh, caps off the nest and leaves them so here is one of these it's I um, can't remember the name of this one but it's a um, relatively big one um, about half the size of a uh, bumblebee this is also a bee now this is a tiny thing and if you see one of these you would probably be think it was a fly it's a little black bee Here's another. This is a green bee, and um, same thing. Uh, many people would probably think this is just a fly. And the next bee will take you by surprise. Um, it certainly took me by surprise because I thought it was a wasp, but it's actually a bee. You can see um, from the picture it's got this big long bee tongue. Um, I, uh, for several years I've been making holes, drilling holes in blocks of wood for bees uh, so that they could uh, lay their eggs. So they lay their eggs and in this case it's a um, uh, mason bee and it caps it off with a uh, mix of clay and bee spit I guess. Uh, this uh, Bees also u use the holes in the wood for shelter. I, when I took this picture I thought this was a wasp. But it's actually one of those mason or cardo bees, the ones that look like wasps. This is another thing I discovered this year. Uh, raspberry canes are not hollow they've got pith in them but bees were using the little holes and I presumed other insects had made these holes um, were buzzing around them those tiny little bees and uh, using them um, for their uh, larva so uh, I set out uh, doing something different it's pretty hard to drill holes in in wood that's long enough for the bees because they, they should be um, say 15 centimeters 6 inches long and the reason for this is because uh, with the orchard mason bees and probably other types too they lay the female eggs deep in the hole and the male eggs the less important ones are laid at the outside so that if a predator comes along it'll eat a bunch of males but if the hole is only short it means that um, she'll, she might o only have a few female eggs in it so long holes are, I found it easy to make them in a cob, which is a clay sand mix. And I just uh, poked it into the wet cob, and then a couple of days later take out the um, pieces of metal. Uh, this is uh, my first one that I, I made, and this is a trial where uh, I've got um, holes in plum wood and I know this works because I have uh, previous ones so this was a control and uh, just to see what the bees would do would they use this would they use this and in the end it was location 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 I guess the bees didn't like the location so they didn't use either one this is a raspberry cane or a grapevine and uh, bees have uh, used this one as well and I know that because I took one apart one time and I found a little green bee in it. This is the wool carder bee, the one that looks like a wasp. And this is a female uh, gathering some nectar. This is the male again with the uh, long tongue. And here he is in close up. And uh, these are amazing creatures. They hover and if the males fight each other uh, for the flower patches. And um, first time I saw one zooming in and um, I thought it was actually attacking the other insect but it was actually had more amorous things on its mind. Uh, 
here's my uh, set of first set of bee blocks that actually worked and you can see that um, the bees have capped off one hole here and one hole down there and they've ca capped off many of the other holes too and they've capped it with this uh, different type of bee little tiny bee has capped it with this stuff that looks like mother of pearl or like mica this is a close up of the big brown um, cap that the larger bee has done and another cap so presumably this is a different type of bee has made this cap this is one of the main predators uh, as far as I can see is the jumping spiders here's a bee uh, one of those carder bees that look like wasps and it's taken shelter for the night and I've actually seen them do that they'll fly over uh, to look for a hole that's the right size and, and stay in it overnight so at various times to be 10, 15, 20 of those uh, in the little um, cob um, blocks that I made. Sometimes they're in the wood too. Here's one further in a hole and just taken at night um, so that you could see them, uh, you know, with a torchlight, lamplight. This is a tiny little bee that um, uses the hole. This is, was the next attempt with um, um, various I uh, used the, the metal bar uh, bars and I used uh, different types of plant stems some pithy some uh, hollow and um, I took out this uh, for a while but I uh, couldn't think of a good stable place to put it so I left it back in the shadows again this is the first time I've seen the bees go into these so you can see little bee heading for somewhere there Next picture, you can see the bee, and I guess he's heading for this hole here, he's, or she is. So that one worked. This is the next one, an old vase, and uh, used the angle grinder to cut out um, a shape. The reason for this uh, funky looking shape was uh, to have shelter. Um, uh, this was left like this so that the raindrops wouldn't fall down on the... Um, on the cob and the, the material. So here we go, I've layered in various stems and the metal bars which get taken out after a couple of days as it gets hard. Here's the finished product and here's the first bee that I know has gone in. Now this was one of the little black bees went into a raspberry cane and it didn't use a hollow one, I would have expected it to use something hollow but it decided to make its own new cavity for its eggs and uh, I found that pretty interesting that they're not lazy they want to do things right I guess and um, anyway here's some like these are uh, old ones that I had just used as is I cut them to um, uh, six or eight inches long and stuck them in and there's the bee again and um, oh that's it so if you want to save not much you can do for these because it's a major thing to be um, um, a hive owner and uh, these guys the bumblebees um, hard to make something for them but the solitary bees you can definitely if you can drill a few holes in wood or if you can pile some um, just bundle up some raspberry canes there's a guy called Dave in Camas Washington uh, has been bundling uh, teasel stems for years and um, the orchard mason bees used them um, so um, the other bees could uh, no doubt use raspberry canes or grapevines as well anyway it's up to you if you wish for your children to see uh, all these wonderful creatures or at least some of them it's time to um, take action now because they're all under extreme pressure and uh, dwindling populations um, amazingly quick how, how they're disappearing so I would urge you to act right now and get out and um, make something before the end of the day thank you